he uh, there was a a part doing a, t uh, a spot during the match where he bounces off the ropes. He kind of springboards himself off the ropes and hits a bit of what looks like a stunner, kind of almost a botched up stunner to the eyes of some, but it was a stunner on Rusev. Um, in the end, though, uh, John Cena did end up going over. Uh, what happened was Rusev, uh, Lana tried to interject herself again. Cena caught it. And this caused Rusev, who was trying to go after Cena, to run into Lana, knocking her down. And Cena ends up getting, using this to his advantage to get the win by hitting Rusev with the AA 1, 2, 3. And again, I know some people, like the Schleg Daddy, are not happy with you know the Cena monster getting fed again. But, um, but again, you know, you have to look at it this way. They want to bring prestige back to this title. Well, him and Daniel winning theirs uh, helps do that. But was it necessary? I'll explain that later. The, and that was the fifth match on the card. The sixth match, or the eighth match overall, on the, including the kickoff show, but the uh, six match from a pay-per-view standpoint Undertaker Bray Wyatt and Undertaker looked in good shape a lot better he grew his hair back out looks like they're going back in that direction that we had back in 2004 which was a good direction in my opinion uh, definitely a decent match um, pretty good at the end uh, both kicked out of the finishers uh, on the initial try, so that was, you know, probably to be expected, but it was pretty good. There was a spot <laughs> in the match where both were lying down, and you see Bray get up and do his spider, get up into his spider walk position, and he's walking towards the Undertaker like he usually does in that spider walk position, but as he's getting close, of course, the Undertaker sits right back up, and you could, from a storyline perspective, you could just see the look on Bray's, Bray's face like, Oh, crap, I'm screwed. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, in the end, though, uh, Bray tried to go for Sister Abigail again. Didn't happen. He ends up getting tombs... He gets end up turned into a tombstone. Undertaker ends up going over and becomes 22 and 1. As crazy as that might sound. And yes, they still celebrate his victory. So, I think... In the long run, yeah, they're going to look at that loss to Lesnar last year as, you know, the streak ending. But if he keeps winning, in a sense, I think from WWE logic, from WWE logic, that one's just going to disappear in obscurity and people are just going to ignore that match and forget about it. But... You know, Undertaker ended up going over. Of course, we also had a lot of time to fill up. We had uh, the Hall of Fame. Uh, we had the uh, Howard Finkel introduce the Hall of Fame um, class, and the Hall of Fame class of 2015. Then we had almost a 15 to 20 minute promo between Triple H with Triple H and Stephanie, which. You know, I'll say this. This is something that didn't need to happen, didn't need to be. But, you know, if you're going to have them come out and announce that, you know, Levi Stadium, that the fans have set a new Levi Stadium record, that's fine. Have them break character, have them do that. But still, you had to give them a promo. Um, like I said, I still think there's a Triple H face turn coming. It just didn't happen tonight. But it looks like they're building towards something towards the end of the year, if not into next year. And, um, basically you have them taking credit for a lot of stuff, basically getting on the fact that they own everybody, and this surprisingly brings out The Rock. And Rock, uh, gets in their faces, basically says, you know, you don't own this, you don't own that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I will say this, I will give credit where credit is due. Stephanie, in her role as a heel, is just tremendous. No matter how bad the situation might be, or how unnecessary uh, the spot on the card might be, or nonsensical that the spot might be as well, but I gotta 
give Stephanie a lot of credit. She is just phenomenal in this role. I mean, I like the fact that she's just basically, from what I could see, and I saw this really last night so at WrestleMania, was she just loves to rub it. She's basically taking, from, from my perspective, from my perspective, from my perspective, she is initially taking everything people say about on the internet, that the, taking everything that the IWC and the YWC say on the internet about certain situations, about what John Cena does, what The Rock does, what this person does and that person does. She is literally taking it and throwing it back into the faces of the superstars and even the fans. You know... So, to me, this was, I mean, to me, Stephanie's really succeeding in this, but, because I, I like how she's almost like, all she has to do is get in your face, tell you like it is, and then force you to leave, and in her mind, you're going to do that. Well, and she's just phenomenal in this role to the point that you know down the line, whether it's going to be the person they brought in to counter her at WrestleMania, or if it's going to be one of the other divas, she's eventually going to get her comeuppance, and then maybe we won't see Stephanie for a while, or maybe Stephanie, like Triple H, will end up doing a face turn. We don't really know. Um, but in the, but basically what happens is, she tries to get The Rock to leave. She's thinking she's succeeded, but instead, Rock, Rock, he walks around to the ringside area, and who's at ringside? And she was shown earlier. Who was at ringside? But the UFC women's bantamweight champion, Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey, of all people. So he brings Ronda over, brings her into the ring to counter Stephanie. And of course, Stephanie tries to, is a little intimidated at first, but tries to use her attitude again. Like, hey, you, you know, I'm this, you know, I'm dominant, I'm the alpha female. You're going to do what I tell you. You're going to get the hell out of here, blah, blah, blah. And uh, in the end... We just ended up having a face up. We ended up having uh, some physicality happen, and you know, Rock uh, uh, attacked Triple H basically, because basically what Triple H, because what Triple H said before this, because of Rock, what Rock said to Stephanie, he basically told Stephanie, "You want this is what Rock said basically, from what I understand, from what I can remember." He says, "You see that look on Ronda's face." That's the look of, she's about to reach down your throat and take your tubes out and jump rope with them. <laughs> and then you have Triple H saying that's enough. That's the last time you're going to talk about my wife like this. And that basically leads to Rock saying, you're right, it is the last time. And boom, Rock ends up attacking uh, Triple H. And then tosses, allows Ronda to kind of get a shot. I guess he tosses Triple H into Ronda. And Ronda basically you know, flips him right over, basically turns him over with ease, chases him out of the ring. And then Stephanie, of course, tries to get in the face of Rhonda and everything, and as she goes to slap her, Rhonda just <coughs> grabs her right in the armbar. It's like, ah! And you, I, I guarantee you, you're going to see that expression on Stephanie's face being shown on Raw tonight. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Don't get me wrong about that. It's going to happen. Don't get me wrong. But I... I admit that even, but I, I admit, I will admit that even though it was an unnecessary 15 to 20 minute uh, promo, which could have just been cut short and they could have just had them break character and say thank you to the fans for doing the, breaking this attendance record, blah, 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 blah. Uh, for an unnecessary promo, it was, it was decent. Um, and I like how it kind of indicates that we're going to get something between Triple H and Rock down the line, maybe this year, maybe, you know, next year. And that we might even get something with uh, Stephanie and Ronda or Stephanie and another diva that might take up, you know, take up for what Ronda did to Stephanie. So, hey, maybe we'll get the AJ-Stephanie confrontation we've been wanting. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, as far as a, a promo, but as far as a, a filler promo, I think it just, they could have, like I said, broke character and, you know, just... Thank the fans for breaking the attendance record. That's all they could have done. But, um, in the end, it turned out to be an okay segment, even though it wasn't really necessary. And I know a lot of people are going to say that. 
And then we get the WWE Championship match. WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Which was... Uh, basically, originally a one-on-one -on -one match and very much dominated by Lesnar. But, you know, as some people pointed out, and I will agree, you know, even though it was dominated by Brock, had a sense of realism to it because of the fact that it was very physical. Roman took about like 10 German suplexes, took the best Brock could dish out, took about four F5s, I mean, basically, and Brock basically took everything that Ro Roman had, from the Superman punches, selling, making them look good, to the spears. But then it was the ending, which really pretty much indicated that what happened earlier with Daniel Bryan and John Cena really kind of is questionable unless they're going to do something about that tonight. And... Basically, what it was is both men were a lot flat on the backs in the ring, and all of a sudden, Seth Rollins' music hits. He comes running out and decides, you know what? I've got an opportunity here. I'm going to take it. Tells the referee he's doing it. Lillian Garcia announces he's cashing in, and the match turns into a triple threat match, which Seth Rollins um, ends up winning when he curve stomps Roman Reigns. He curve stomps. A Okay, he curve stomps Lesnar, he curve stomps him once, doesn't get the job done, he tries to keep Roman out of the ring, and then when he tries to, like, I think a second time to curve stomp Lesnar, Lesnar picks him up for the F5, and it looks like, okay, he's going to fail cashing in, and instead Roman comes in, uh, spears uh, Lesnar, which enables uh, Rollins to land on his feet, hit the curve stomp on Roman, Rollins ends up winning the match and becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, again, there's a lot of people that are going to look at this and say, well, yeah, we like the fact that, you know, WWE pretty much knew that if they didn't do this, they were going to have a, you're going to have, they, they were going to have fans crapping on the, the original result for the main event. So, they knew they had to do something, and I admit it was a good, good uh, idea to do this, a good alternative. But then, and, you know, and I'm happy for Seth, I'm happy for the fact that they're putting the belt on him, but I don't see his title run lasting very long. I really don't. Unfortunately, I don't see it. You know, this is what I said in my reaction video, in my last, my final part to my reaction videos. I don't think Seth is going to hold it for that long. He might be a transitional champion to where he loses it at Extreme Rules. Hell, he might be a, a, a long reigning champion to where he holds it to at least Money in the Bank, maybe SummerSlam. But I just don't see him holding it that long. Heck, I, you know, I, I look at it this way, and I'm sure a lot of fans are looking at it like this too. I don't think he's going to hold it past Raw. That's what a lot of fans are worried about. They're not, that he's not going to hold it past Raw, that Lesnar's going to invoke his rematch and get the title back at the end of Raw. That, that's what I think could happen. But again, if they're going to go with Seth and Roman for a while, then we'll see what happens. But again... I, I just do not see him having a very long title reign. I think they only did this tonight because they had to get the fans off their back. I think the direction they're going to go with Seth is very similar to how they had Edge when he first cashed in, became champion, be a transitional champion, to where maybe in Chicago you'll have Brock, maybe Roman finally get the belt, and that's about it. Because he, he, here's, what, here's what a lot of fans are going to point out. What sense does it make for Roman, no not sense for Roman, what sense does it make for Daniel Bryan and John Cena, you know, I'm trying to look at my time here, to them will be like, what, what sense, you know, what sense does it make uh, for either one of them to win their championships and try to bring prestige back to those championships if you're going to keep the WWE world title here, what sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense. You know? It, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, he, he, here's how I look at it. Let's go back to 27. Miz 
retained his championship, right? Some say that was help thanks to The Rock. Okay, true. But Miz retained his championship. Now, here's what happened, though. A lot of people thought Miz was going to lose to John at 27. He didn't. But he ended up losing to John later on in the Triple Threat Steel Cage at Extreme Rules. So, my, my thought is this. They're going to go the same direction as they did with Edge. And they're going to let Seth be champion for a month. And then he's going to drop it back to Brock or Roman at Extreme Rules. That, that, that's what I see. That's what I see. So, because, like I said, what sense does it make to put, scene, to put the U.S. title in the Intercontinental Town on both Daniel Bryan and John Cena if you're going to keep the WWE world title around? Wasn't, wasn't the initial plan for, for Brock to probably retain so that at least it gives these other championships a, a chance? I'm just saying. Now, unless they do what they did when CM Punk was champion and have Seth be sort of a mid-card WWE World Champion, I can understand that. I can understand that, but still, I know a lot of fans are going to be like, what sense does it make? So, uh, overall, I thought it was... So, overall, for WrestleMania, I thought it was good. Um, as you probably saw in my reaction videos, I had a WrestleMania t-shirt on that I bought from my job. So, again though, so again, that's how I was watching Wrestlemania, wearing that. I was, basically, it was Wrestlemania prepared. <laughs> um, but, that, yeah, like I said in the end, uh, what, what sense did it really, really make, you know what I'm saying, for, for Cena and... I mean, not that I have no problem with both of them winning, okay? I don't. I mean, I know some people might have problems with Rusev being another, you know, uh, you know, another NXT alumni being brought in, being pushed to the moon, and then all of a sudden jobbing out to, to John Cena at Mania. Okay, I, I can understand the, you know, dislike for that, but storyline-wise, it had a reason. He had a reasoning here, a more legit reasoning. Daniel Bryan win the championship, I can understand giving him the Grand Slam title. Just in case, maybe he's not going to have that much longer in the much longer in the ring. But, but you know the the way I look at it, you know, I know a lot of people are going to say, "Well, what sense does it make for Seth to win?" And that's what I'm saying. That's why I think he's not going to have a long title reign. I think it was just to send the fans home. I think that's what it was. So. Uh, we'll find out tonight on Raw what exactly what happens, but um, that's just my initial thought. So, that overall, like I said, WrestleMania was, I thought it was okay. Again, I know other people can have their opinions on it, but that's just my opinion on it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the reaction videos will be coming as well. And that's all I'm going to say. God bless. Take care. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of WrestleMania 31. And you think maybe it succeeded the it, it, it exceeded the uh, uh, flatness that it was being given the uninspiredness did it succeed that did it did it succeed and be something more was it basically don't judge a book by by its cover kind of event let me know what you guys think down below comment if you like. Talk to you later.